Good morning. Welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. I'm Jeff Snyder. This is BRN AM for Wednesday, October 11th, 2023. And our top story today, small business owners are feeling successful and fulfilled. Joining me now to discuss this and a lot more, Devin Bray is with U.S. Bank. Devin, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. Well, thanks for having us, Jeff. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, let's let's talk about this survey. I, I think this survey comes at a very opportune time. Um, high, you know, higher than normal inflation, rising interest rates. I guess my first question is, how are small businesses, small business owners feeling? And look, they're the lifeblood of our of the U.S. economy. I, I love that. And you know what? My favorite answer. It, it it it's always shocking. You can hear all the turmoil, all the news all the hubbubble and all the thing it's going to come down to is that we've got really optimistic and really resilient feeling um, small businesses. And I think that uh, heartstring is what's being tugged the strongest right now. Yeah. And I, and I know uh, U.S. Bank has really done a lot to support small business owners. We'll, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But uh, small business owners, and I, I'm a small business owner um, after working for years in corporate America, um, they take a big leap of faith. Uh, what drives them? What motivates them? Are, are they, they're very passionate people typically. You know, this is also, you know, we recently just conducted this survey and our survey came back with, you know, nine out of 10 of our small businesses, business owners are feeling successful. And you think, okay, well, what makes success? And I think what, you know, kind of going to the heart of things is driving back towards a business owner's purpose. Why did they start the business? What motivated them to make that transition? And I think it does go back to some that core idea of what am I passionate about? You know, what do I love out of this life? And what imprint am I going to make on my communities, on my family? What is my legacy going to look like? And so I think what's really powerful about, you know, you said kind of the lifeblood of our economy. Um, it's that, you know, small business owners are dreamers that are actually taking that dream and then putting it into action. So despite when things are hard, whether there's inflation, whether there's a pandemic and a shutdown, you're finding these small business owners being incredibly resilient, incredibly resourceful, leveraging their communities and one another to say, you know what, I'm staying true and dedicated to my purpose. And then, and I think that's what's, you know, continuing to like fan the flame, so to speak, and really seeing our small business owners continue to adapt and evolve. Yeah. And uh, I, I like that you said, you talk about the mission. A lot of people get into the business. Look, money is a nice result, uh, but, but building business from the ground up, um, very difficult. Let's talk about, about how U.S. Bank is supporting small businesses you want to talk a little bit about that? And, and I know one thing is getting the survey done, providing the perspective of small business owners. But, but how do you support, you know, you're a national company all across the United States. How do you support small business owners who sometimes need access to funding or they just need a little guidance about maybe how you file your taxes? I love all of that. So, you know, one of the pivots that I had the pleasure to witness with U.S. Bank was moving from calling uh, our team bankers, and we now call them client relationship consultants. And we even have small business specialists, um, because to your point, folks are not necessarily needing a banker. They need a support system. They need a friend. They need an advisor. And I think that's when you start to think about how does my bank play into my relationship? And, you know, again, when you think about how a small business owner has so much coming at them every single day, whether it's all the different digital resources that are now, you know, amplifying the noise, um, they know they need to figure out how can I grow? How can I take the thing that I'm most passionate about and actually see it, you know, come to fruition? And you're absolutely right. So access to capital is probably the number one. Um, and that comes in a lot of different forms. So whether it's through U U.S. Bank, and we do have an incredible diversity lending program that helps our women, minority owners, and veteran-owned um, businesses gain access to capital um, in new ways. So that's been a really powerful program. We also have in place in our markets um, a key team of folks that we call access advisors that are really serving the underserved and the underprivileged to make sure, like from financial literacy, 
Um, and understanding, again, if it's not your bank that's going to provide the resource, we have amazing community resources and CDFIs and, you know, just, you know, your chambers. There's so many, uh, you know, and that's what I think I loved even about. I have to talk about the pandemic because it's still, you know, while, while we're three years post, it's still it's now part of our DNA. And it did help us to evolve and think about how we work together instead of a silo. Because I do think, you know, honestly, Jeff, you know, being a small business owner can be lonely. And even some of our survey actually said, gosh, while I'm feeling successful, I'm also feeling incredibly stressed. Um, maybe I'm even missing out on important things like birthdays or anniversaries or, you know, I have to skip somewhere in order to be more successful. And that's where I think what we learned through the pandemic is that you're not alone. It's amazing even if you're feeling like on an island by leveraging your community, leveraging your resources, partnering with your bank as an advisor, that's where you start to see the momentum and you suddenly learn that you don't have, to, you can be passionate about the thing you're passionate about, but let the other folks that have the expertise in these areas bring those resources to you to help educate you and get you what you need. Yeah, sometimes it just takes knowing where to call. Devin, I need to take a very quick break. When we come back, we'll talk more about Small business owners, are they optimistic for the future? You're going to want to stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We wanna make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses, I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Welcome back. We're joined this morning by Devin Bray of US Bank. Devin, thanks so much for staying with us. Really appreciate you hanging around for segment number two this morning. I'm glad to be here, Jeff. So all the headwinds that we all feel, all the stresses, our, our small business owners, look, you, you already highlighted the, the passion that these people feel, and maybe that trumps uh, some of these stresses, but are they overly optimistic? How do, they, how do they feel towards our economy? How do they feel towards their business and growing their business? You know, I think actually the tools and resources that folks begin to continue to understand that they maybe haven't been leveraging, they're interested now in saying, okay, what can I do to power my potential? What can I do to do things differently? So let, whether it's, and I know folks, they've gone online, but maybe they haven't taken the next step to be able to accept payments online. Um, maybe it's that I have a credit card, but I've been using my personal credit card. A lot of folks don't know the difference between, hey, you know, I maybe I'm using my consumer credit card for my business, but my business, you know, I always think of a business like a child. And sometimes, you know, you have to empower the child to start to take some independent moves and things like having a credit card, suddenly rewards can actually make the difference between how you can retain employees. 
um, I had a beautiful story, Jeff, where we had um, a, a black woman owned retailer and the difference of what that capital, having that credit card as a source of capital meant for her business was the difference between being able to retain her talent or lose her talent. And as we know right now in this competitive market, uh, you know, trying to motivate your employees, trying to keep them there. So leveraging the credit card, right? She's in those highs and lows between when she buys and purchases her product. Um, but by using the credit card instead of her own cash or maybe even a you know, personal card, suddenly she had access to rewards. And that reward incentive was what she used to be able to provide holiday incentives at the end of the year. She said her team was moved to tears, like nobody had ever cared for them that way, shown them that type of commitment. And when you think about a credit card, you don't always think like, gosh, this could be a retention tool to help me grow my business, my talent. And you know, just thinking about the ways that we can grow a business. I think this is some of those things that are outside of that box that maybe might be common knowledge, but maybe not. And that's where I think our, our business owners continue to thrive and find new ways and new solutions to keep their business thriving. Are, Devin, are, are there, do you, do you gather from the, the survey, like some top skills that people kind of, that business, small business owners say, these are the keys to my success. These are the reasons why I've been successful. One is the passion. I know you, you've already talked about that. Um, but are there, are there traits that we can take away if we're thinking about starting a business? I, I'm always worried about, I'm not worried, but I'm always interested in how we can provide some tools and tips for people thinking about starting a business. So what are some tips for, for success? Absolutely. I think a small business owner is, all, is gonna be continuously overwhelmed by the constant decisions that they have to make, right? Um, and that can come from anything on, again, how to gain capital, how to tackle your balance sheet, um, you know, what digital tools to start, you know, to engage with for your business. So I definitely think, again, it's somebody who is willing to have the conversation, willing to connect with another individual like a banker, like somebody who's ready to be your advisor, you know, leveraging your community sources like your CDFIs. Those folks that are starting a business, it's about communicating with others who are doing it, what they're doing to be successful and what they're using to actually amplify. I, social media continues to be a constant where we see folks needing to figure out a way to gain market share, to expose their, um, their, their product or their service out there in their communities. So some of those tools, and again, and it might just seem obvious, but it's being able to build those trusted relationships with people so that, that who maybe who know it better can do it better. Um, and that is, you know, I think that's one of those kind of like mainstays, Jeff, that will help somebody really make an impact on their business as they're just starting. Yeah. And I always say, if I can do it, anyone can do it. It's just a matter of, I believe that. I think that for a lot of people out there kind of scratching their head, maybe they're leaving a corporate job or they're retired and they say, I want to do something different. You can invest in yourself. And by the way, you can leave a legacy once you build this thing up. It becomes an asset unto itself. Devin, we're going to have to leave it there. Great conversation. Really appreciate you joining us. And we look forward to having you back on the program again very soon. Appreciate it, Jeff. You guys take care. That wraps up this episode of BRNAM. Have a topic of interest, someone you think we should talk to? Drop us a line and don't forget for all the latest curated news and lifestyle, wellness, finance, tech, so much more in all in one place, check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. Want to search our archives, check out our latest content, then visit our website. We're back again tomorrow with another great edition of BRNAM. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the changes. Now is your opportunity to co-create content around any topic on the first lifestyle and wellness network. Reach a global audience through our platform and co-own exclusive branded content. All of our programs are available on demand and also as audio only podcasts so you can take us on the go. Broadcast Retirement Network, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device.